again. This is Jim at the House at Pooh Corner, and we are continuing our conversation. Peter Boynton and I are continuing our conversation about the profession of acting. Actually, it's a profession that's gone back to almost the dawn of history with the craftsmen of Dionysus. I had an acting coach who wrote the book, Craftsmen of Dionysus. Wow. Fantastic acting hmm. teacher. And he was also a college, uh, my, my master's degree, he was one of my professors. Um, so, um, I want to focus a little bit in this half hour on what you learn if you have good acting coaches and a, a good continuum of training. And I had the usual in college, four years of college where I major, majored in French but studied lots of other things. I think a liberal arts education is good I agree. for actors yeah. and trying all these kind of different kinds of things. We. Oui. <laughs> and, and then I got a master's degree in theater with um, a lot of training in technical theater, how to build things and how to, how to not knock over the, the set, all that sort of thing. And um, then after a brief hiatus of formal training, I studied in England with a, an emphasis on Shakespeare and Ibsen. And I, I think we studied um, the great American playwrights. Was this at Lambda? No, like that. It was like that. It was the, uh, the British American Drama Academy. Okay. But the people we worked with were Judy Dench, Richard Johnson, uh, Paul Daneman, uh, Derek Jacobi, Simon Callow, who was Mozart, uh, the original Mozart on stage. So I got a lot of um, very valuable training and I have to say that it reinforced my ideas about acting. I, uh, I learned an awful lot but it was all in the progression of what I thought was right mm -hmm. anyway. And so when you study acting, you have to go in two different directions. You have to do the physical stuff, which is movement, voice, and the physical things that help you get around on the stage. Then you also have to study the intellectual side of acting, which is how to create a character. And you have to understand the play. You have to know what the words mean in the play. You have to know the subtext, what the, what the playwright is getting at. And what, one expression that I learned in England that I have found absolutely true is that acting is thinking the right thoughts. So whatever else it is, it's a lot of other stuff too. But if you get to the right thought and you've got the body and you've got the voice and you're working with other good actors, then you learn the subtext. The subtext comes to you, the metaphors come to you, which is another word for saying what are you doing? Are you, are you sticking it to the other person? Are you covering them, covering them with honey? Are you seducing? Are you, because everything you do on stage has to be, should be described in terms of verbs, not in terms of nouns so much and, and adjectives. I find when a, when a director tells me what I am, it it's, pins you down yeah. to a moment which is useless. Yeah, so this is perfect. I did a, uh, for 13 years I taught a class at Burlington College for film directors. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a directing class. And the thing I focused on more than anything was getting them to use action verbs mm -hmm. when they spoke to an actor. Mm -hmm. Because they had no idea how to speak or communicate to an actor. They were terrific with the camera, mm -hmm. setting up a shot, maybe writing the script. Mm -hmm. But now they had to communicate what they wanted to the actor. And if you use the verb to be with an actor, oh. be mad, be this, be that, it shuts them down. Yes. Because it, it, whether you may mean it or not, it is perceived by the brain as a criticism. Yeah. I am not being that. I'm, you know, I'm failing. Whereas if I say, um, kick him in the ass. Or if I say, <laughs> you know, Jim, I want you to humiliate 
this person. Mm -hmm. That's a very, now that could be, it's going to look like you are mad mm -hmm. or manipulative or something, but mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to be something. I'm asking you to do something. Yep. Um, and it's interesting because you were saying, your British teachers were saying about the proper thing to think. Yeah, and acting is thinking the right thoughts. Thinking the right thoughts. And I've never heard that, but I know all my American-based teachers were always talking about what do you want. Yes. And that's the same. It's, a, it's, it's the same two thing. ways of saying the same thing. Yep. One's a very British way. One's mm -hmm. more of an American yep. way. Just what do you want? Exactly. You know, I want to be recognized. Mm -hmm. I want to be loved. That's right. a huge part. I want vengeance. Mm -hmm. You know, I want power. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. if you know what your character wants, the other things will fall into place, which is really yeah. fun. Yeah. Can I throw in, I'll throw in a pitch for, I think, one of the best acting texts. Uh, there was a, he's passed away now, but there was a, a coach and director in New York named Harold Guskin, mm -hmm. G-U-S-K-I-N. And I met him through Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, who did um, The Color of Money with Tom Cruise and Newman and The Abyss. Uh, about the deep sea stuff. She had a nice film career, but she had a terrific stage career. She's my age. We worked together in Chicago before she moved to New York. Um, but she started working with Harold because he's a private coach. He was Kevin Klein's coach for you mm. for decades. And uh, I was working on something, and uh, Mary said, you ought to go check out Harold. He's a really terrific coach. And he worked in a space half the size of this room, and you sat and you worked through what the character wanted mm -hmm. and uh, helped he helped an actor figure out a part which is terrific yeah. but he wrote a book called if I'm going to get the title right I think it's called How to Stop Acting that's the title of the book How to Stop Acting Harold Guskin and it's one of the best acting books I've ever read just mm -hmm. in terms of talking about like when you're a young actor and you don't know, necessarily know what you're doing, you're working with experienced actors or you're going and auditioning, you're dealing with casting directors and, you know, and they start taking about, oh, he made great choices or he made lousy choices when he did his audition. It's like, choices, what choices? What are we talking about? Mm -hmm. And really, it's like, it seems so forward, foreign and out there. It not, has nothing to do with me. So to make it about you, it's just, okay, this could be totally wrong for what they want for this character, even at an audition, but I'm gonna make that choice they're talking about is just, what do I think this guy wants? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Or, or is, you know, I'm gonna make a couple of decisions based on how the text hits me mm -hmm. about this character, and I'm just gonna let it fly, yeah. you know, and I'll bring my own humor into it and my own physicality or mm -hmm. wisecracking or whatever it is, so they get to see an interpretation of that written part for the role, but they get to see you, mm -hmm. too. And they may say, okay, what you're doing is totally, completely wrong, mm -hmm. but we love how you did that. Yes. Can you do this instead? Mm -hmm. You know, make a couple of different decisions about what you think this guy wants, or we'll mm -hmm. tell you what he wants, you know? And then the, when they do that, they just want to see if you're directable, yep. if you can take direction. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's harder to learn than just basic choices about being, you know, developing a role. Mm -hmm. Taking direction is really, if you have a good director who speaks in those active yes, verbs, right. like I need you to, you know, apologize. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look, it, there's no apology in the text, but when you go through this, mm -hmm. you're apologizing. Can you apologize? You know, mm -hmm. okay, oh yeah, I could, how would I do that? I don't know. And you may come up with something that he didn't or she didn't mm -hmm. expect, but if you get the same result, they're going to go, okay, I can work with this person. Well, the they coach get that, it. that I told you about, Jerome Rockwood, mm -hmm. we had a course where I think the whole course was based on metaphor. So if you would say to somebody, uh, what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish in this scene? What are you doing? And the actor would say, I'm persuading her. No, you're not persuading her. You're burning the words into her skull. Oh. So yeah. everything became a metaphor, yeah. which for an actor, that's that's a gift. That's yeah. that's a billion dollar gift. Yeah. Because it lets the it gives the actor the strength to to, to play it with a much more interesting yeah. 
Uh, well, they have an image now in their head. Yes, you have a, a metaphor is you know speaking in one about one thing in terms of something else. But yes, it's a physical image, a living yeah, metaphor. Exactly. Uh, you know, a dead one. He kicked the bucket. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't help much. No, and it's useful too as you get to know an actor. Mm -hmm. uh, all of us as humans rely on one of our senses often more than others. Some people mm -hmm. are very visual. Mm -hmm. Some people are very auditory. Some people are very, you know, tensile, touch is more. And if you can use that metaphor you're talking about in one of those senses more than another, if you know, if I know someone, you know, is, if someone speaks to you and they're always talking about, well, I hear this or, you know, I'm, I, I, uh, I'm listening to, you know, they're always talking about hearing things. That's probably a fairly, uh, uh, person who, who's dealing with life from an auditory point of view. Mm -hmm. Or if you deal with someone who says, well, I think, well, I'm analyzing, well, you know, my, my thought is, that's someone who's cerebral, you know, mm -hmm. and maybe it's another approach with that actor, you know, mm -hmm. which if you're going to direct them. Um, it's fascinating. It's just people yeah. skills in a lot of ways, you know, mm -hmm. um, but listening to how people speak and how they move and how they what they say or what they don't say, you mm -hmm. know, will tell you a lot about how you can work with them. Yeah. I just thought of another one where he says, uh, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm putting my makeup on. No, you're not. You're creating a masterpiece. I'm shaving. No, you're creating a masterpiece. That it brings the life out of you so, yeah. so strongly. So that's one of the reasons I think I mentioned Jerome Rockwood because as, as an actor, if some you know, bad director says to me, I want to see more fear. And believe me, these amateur directors around here, that's all you get. Yeah. You have to translate that yeah. into an action. And yeah. they'll think they directed you into it, but you are countering their direction yeah. and coming up with something positive because you can't portray a negative. It, does, it doesn't, S doesn't so work. One of the things I learned the most from the various teachers that I thought were the best, Julie Bovasso was one of the best teachers I ever worked with in a small acting class situation. She was John Travolta's mother in um, Staying Alive. No, what's the thing with the dancing? Yeah. Right. Staying I, Alive? What's that? I, no. Um, I know what you mean, but I can't think of the name. What's the dance show? Yeah, with their disco dancing. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, Julie Bavasso was his mother, that character. And she's, she's one of the first um, pioneers of off-Broadway, starting off-Broadway theater companies. Mm. Um, but she always used to talk about, and other people I worked with, the reason you need to have a little bit of technique, even if you have basic good inherent skills, is that 90% of the directors you're going to work with have no idea what the hell they're doing. And you've got to be able to say, uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh, uh-huh, mm -hmm. and then save your own skin. Yeah. Because you don't want to be openly antagonistic, right. uh, and you have to understand what their vision is and try to give them that. Mm -hmm. But usually the way they're going to try to help you is not going to help you. No. Um, and part of it for me, I know many successful actors who can spend hours in rehearsal talking about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, table sessions with the scripts out. Talk. I hate that. Yeah, me too. That's I, a classroom. I hate I talk, 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 yeah. talk, talk. Save it it's for like, the classroom. Let's it's, just it's, get up on our yeah. feet and let's see what's going on and mm -hmm. let's do it. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, often I've worked with actors that come out of an, a college drama program mm -hmm. and they're still fairly clueless because they have a lot of talking in them mm -hmm. and a lot of theory uh, but they didn't spend a lot of time just on their feet trying it try it mm -hmm. you know 300 different ways mm -hmm. and see what really makes sense it's the doing the doing the doing mm -hmm. the doing yeah. and you don't you don't really get that until you start working with people who really know what they're doing in a re I can remember you know there, I, I've been in different Level, shows that had different levels of success. Um, my first equity job was a tour of The Sound of Music with Anne Blythe mm -hmm. and Jean-Pierre Aumont. And Jean-Pierre Aumont was a French actor who came to the States after World War II. He was an ex-resistance fighter uh, with the French resistance. 
and became a Hollywood star, but he did a lot of Broadway. He did Tovarish on Broadway with Vivian Lee, lots of plays. This is back before my time. But he was Von Trapp, and Anne Blythe was uh, Maria, and they had completely opposite ways of working. Jean-Pierre would come up to you behind. We were in theaters ahead. Uh, there was all uh, theaters in the round, stages in the round. So we had VOMs or vomitoriums mm -hmm. to come in. Just picture like a big arena like the Coliseum, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, he'd come up to you right before your rent and say, hey, how you doing? What'd you do last night? Oh, did you meet new girls? You know, blah, blah, blah. All right, all right let's go. Boom. And go work. Whereas mm -hmm. Anne Blythe, you couldn't talk to her because she was preparing, mm -hmm. you know. Both are valid. Mm -hmm. You learn what actors need, what kind of space, or how they like to work. Mm -hmm. And if you're an actor that needs to really block it out, mm -hmm. you just make sure people know. Yeah. You know? If it's you're valid. It, and it changes, of course. The longest run I did was She Loves Me on Broadway, two years. So think of two years, eight shows a week. You reach a point where you can go out there on automatic. Sure. And you don't want to, no. and you get out there and you make sure that you stay involved. But, you know, I, I've just been reading, um, I'm finally seeing Hamilton next week. It only opened four years ago on Broadway. Mm -hmm. But we're finally t we're taking the kids and we're going to see uh, Hamilton. And I've been reading, of course, I boned up on the album because it's a different, I'm not, um, not real conversant with rap as much. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of hip hop and rap in this and it's fast. And I knew I'd wanna know the show rather than just going cold. Because my younger friends who have seen it said, some of it, it goes by so fast mm -hmm. and the words are so fast that you miss a lot. Yeah, especially with our hearing problems. Yeah, hearing mm -hmm. things or whatever. So I've been boning up on the album and there's a annotated, a, a book that was put out with all the lyrics and uh, Lin-Manuel annotates each of the lyric um, sheets for each of the songs and talks about where this came from or this was previously we had done this and it morphed and it changed and it's fascinating reading that just to see how much um, changed. It's actually a great book for eventually this is going to get released so that every college and high school is going to do this show. I mean it's, um, have you seen it yet? No. Okay. It's, it's a, a long story. I've read a lot about it, and I don't want to see it. But Okay, so go. now that I finally got, have had the album for a few months, I've been listening over, I, mm -hmm. I know it cold now, and I've gone through this book, I, I realize how amazing it is. It's really quite a, it's a game changer, you mm -hmm. know, like Oklahoma was back in its day with Agnes DeMille and story and song and dance and script all integrated. It's that much of a game changer. Um, but it's fascinating. My point in all this is it's fascinating to see how many different influences created their final product. Not mm -hmm. just the composer, lyricist, lead actor, Lynn manuel but all the other people involved through the workshop processes, through off-Broadway mm -hmm. at the public theater, to moving to Broadway, and all of those original cast members, how they individually had a hand in writing that show. Mm -hmm. you know? Much like a chorus line is the perfect example. Yeah. Those were dancers telling their story, and Michael Bennett made their stories into a show. Yeah. Unlike chorus line, everybody involved in Hamilton from the, of the original company has a piece of the show, mm -hmm. which is, that's also groundbreaking mm -hmm. on Broadway. And they're, they're going to make money forever, as long as they're yeah. alive, on their contribution as the original company. Mm -hmm. um, I love that kind of story. <coughs> Dancing yeah. at Lunasa was like that. The Irish rep yeah. company pulled that together. And Rex Harrison had an awful lot to do with My Fair Lady. I mean, they just worked. Yeah. I read his book, uh, No Laughing Matter, or Serious Business. Serious Business. It's called. Um, but the, did they give him, did Lerner and Lowe give him a piece of the show? Probably not. I don't that's, remember. That's but old school. That, it's, it's just, I think Hamilton's the first time hmm. that that's happened, where mm -hmm. the Actors are created as the original cast who mm -hmm. developed the whole thing are created as um, contributing members getting paid, you know, at, with either a percentage or a royalty, however they worked mm -hmm. it out. That's pretty cool. Yep. I don't know the details on it, I've just been, mm -hmm. I know that that's, that's what happened. I've always thought that's the best way to do it. On the other hand, you know, you've got, you know, William Saroyan locks himself up in a room and a week later he comes out with the time of your life. Um, 
but the, the, the flesh and blood of the actor right. contributing, you've got to listen to that. Yeah. It, it's very important yeah. to pull that off. Yeah. Yeah, with, with our movie that, that happened, the one that's playing around Vermont now, the, made in Vermont, there was a lot of actor contribution sure. to that. And some of those scenes are the, I don't know, the sweetest, the, the most interesting to me yeah. in, in the scene. Where, hey, why don't we try this? And, and they came up with some pretty good stuff. I but love it. I love that too. It's really interesting, you know, getting back to um, being an actor specifically in Vermont, you know, this, your show gets an audience outside of Vermont. Mm -hmm. But any, <coughs> excuse me, any non small city or metropolitan area, like we are in a very rural state, the opportunity, opportunities are often much uh, fewer mm -hmm. to get involved in theater. And that's, that's where it's really great if you have a passion for it, you know, produce your own. You know, mm -hmm. that's like, you do that, that's what I do. I did some shows with established theater companies in, the, in our local mid-Vermont mid area. Mm -hmm. But they are few and far between, and if you feel like, well, they're doing something really cool, but I kind of want to do this, and nobody's doing this, mm -hmm. create it yourself. You have to, and you and have to make the, get the phone calls and pull right. everybody together. And it's really liberating. Yeah. You know, once you realize you know, there's no secret to being a producer, there's no secret handshake you know, to be a director, mm -hmm. you just do it, yeah. even if you um, are uh, not particularly successful when you first start doing it. The more you do it, the more you learn. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you know, for any younger actors, and we have quite a few. Um, I worked with our local high school up until several years ago. I, for about 13 years, I directed their spring musical. Yeah. And I worked with some really talented kids. And some of them were like successful on a high school level. And you could see that they were going to stretch and definitely do something beyond the small rural Vermont Harwood Union High School, you know. And a great example I love to use, and anyone else who's worked with her loves to use it too, is a, a gal named Shana Taub. She was about two years ahead of my daughter, and I, she was leads in the shows that I directed uh, at Harwood Union. And we always felt like we'd chuckle about Shana when she was you know, 15, we say, well, Shana's 15 going on 35. Mm -hmm. She was already very focused, very mature, very um, dedicated to doing musical theater. Went through the Tisch program at NYU, the acting program, mm -hmm. and is a composer, an accompanist, uh, a director, and an actor. And she's done a lot of great work. And her latest gig is writing the lyrics for the new Broadway musical production that's coming now, I think in 2021, of the movie The Devil Wears Prada. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. And her um, composer collaborator is Sir Elton John. So this little kid from Waitsfield, Vermont, mm -hmm. there she is. She's the, she's the collaborator with Elton John on a new musical. And Ias Mitchell, this is a similar. Say again? Anais Mitchell, isn't that her name? Yeah, she's, she's from Vermont, show right? Hades Town. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Shana did some of the Hades Town when they were when they mm -hmm. were touring that in Vermont years ago. Yeah, I saw the original production at the Barry in Barry. So you would have seen Shana in that. She was one of the sirens, the three sirens, okay. I think. Um, but yeah, so you know, the point is, I I know that when I was sort of in with the big with, with the big league, you know, I suddenly was working with Broadway people or daytime television stars or whatever. You know, after the initial, whoa, am I really here pinching myself? Mm -hmm. It becomes very matter of fact very quickly, in a good way. Mm -hmm. You know, and you realize, of course I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um, just gotta put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also very nice when somebody needs you. Mm -hmm. that, that feels really great. Yeah when they just, gee, who, who can do this? And then the phone rings. Yeah. And it's just it's a really cool feeling. It is. Uh, and they pay you. Yeah. You know, that's, that's I that's like that. That's even better. You know, it's one thing to get the phone call when they're not paying you. Okay, I expect that. Right. It doesn't and, mean a whole lot. And to be honest, money. Jim, that's the majority of work in Vermont. Oh, yeah. You know, one of the things we pride ourselves on at the Skinner Barn is that 
I don't care if it's our intern, everybody gets paid something. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to make a living on it, right. but everybody gets a, you know, a salary. Obviously, our equity actors, the union actors, have a minimum we have to pay them mm -hmm. by contract. But uh, I've always stressed that to, if it's a project you really want to work on and it's going to help you develop your craft when there's no money, of course do it if yeah. you can. Right. But don't get in the habit of giving it away. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can work with companies that will pay you, it does great things for your confidence and self mm -hmm. sense as a professional actor. Yeah. You know? And you feel, I feel a little bit more responsible. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't, but I do. I feel more responsible and obligated to the people who hire me. Yeah. When they're paying me. I, well, of course. Well, good. I, I was yeah. I wasn't sure whether I should be or not. No, I think everybody <laughs> feels that. You know, it's mm -hmm. um, the stakes are a little higher for everyone. Mm -hmm. If somebody's like to produce, we just we usually have a two or three week run of a show, so it's only going to be ten or fifteen performances mm -hmm. with two or three weeks rehearsal at a little one hundred seat theater. Mm -hmm. Most of the musicals that I do at the Skinner Barn over the last this will be our twentieth year next year. Most of them come in somewhere around $25,000 to produce. That's, that's a big chunk of change. That's royalties, costumes, tech people, programs, advertising, paying a director, paying a few equity actors, and paying some lesser salary to everyone else. That's a lot of money mm -hmm. to recoup for just a you know, $20 or $25 ticket. Yeah. So it's when you hire an actor to be in that situation, as a producer, I, I expect a certain commitment. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. this is not the community theater is fantastic, and usually there's no risk mm -hmm. uh, from the production point of view. Nobody's put up big money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have a minute. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> so here we have been with uh, Peter Boynton discussing. Theater everywhere, not just Vermont, but uh, Broadway and regional theater. And um, I did a lot of independent movies, by the way, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but and it, that's, those were the days. Um, and uh, so I'm hoping that you will find this educational and interesting, and that you will let your friends um, come and hear what two old theater people have found worth doing for most of their lives and then ended up in Vermont and we're doing it here. So thank you very much for listening and thank you very much Peter Boynton You're for welcome. sharing this with us. My pleasure. And this was the only way I would get you to, to hear my story. I love it. If I pinned you down. I love it. So here we are and thanks a lot everybody and uh, we'll see you whatever I do <laughs> next time. <laughs>